guys, Lemmy here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about something that I'm pretty passionate about and I know for certain a lot of other people won't necessarily agree with. I urge you to keep an open mind about it as we get into the topic. This week we're going to discuss a thought or an idea. And just as a disclaimer, this isn't advice on how to improve as an artist or improve at art more quickly. And though a lot of my videos, sometimes they have tips, sometimes I talk about art related stuff, or sometimes I just talk about ideas about things in the art community, I probably should have been, I guess, more clear last week in my previous video, as I think that some people watched that video and took it in a way that it wasn't originally intended to be. So just want to reiterate, this video is about a thought. It's not about advice on how to improve at art. It has nothing to do with that. So today's topic is pretty straightforward. You do not have to improve as an artist or at art ever. As in, you do not have to make an active effort to improve your artwork. You don't have to get better at art. You don't need to strive for excellence or perfection. You don't have to do any of these things if you don't want to. And it's as simple as that. For added clarification, <laughs> I'm not saying that you don't have to try to improve at art to result at improving at art. What I'm saying is that if you don't want to improve or make an effort to improve, you simply don't have to and the story ends there. I'm here to say that you never have to be anything more than what you are. And that choice is yours and yours alone. And if you've watched my previous video, you may think that I'm being hypocritical on this one. Last week I said that there's no one specific behavior or lack of behavior that directly results in forever stopping the progression of artwork that affects every member of the art community in the same way. At one point I mentioned that my brother didn't do any art for about 10 years, picked up a crayon, and the art that he produced was like a million times better than what he used to make when he did art like all the time. But today really has nothing to do with that. So to be clear, once again, it's not about accidentally getting better with time. It's a completely separate idea. Today's idea is about a person not caring to improve or trying to improve. It's about a person being happy with where they are and why that's a totally fine place to be. I see so many comments, articles, websites, videos, blah, blah, where people are telling one another where to go or how to be, which way they went to get where they're going and why they firmly believe that it's the one way to get there and everyone needs to follow suit. There's also people out there telling other people that they must improve or they must make something out of their art or they have to do something or they can't be classified as an artist. So while this video does not contain advice for improving, this video may kind of help you gain some perspective about how we treat others and their choices and their thoughts about where they want to be with their craft. So, for the people out there who have been told that they have to improve, that they have to get better at art, that you must strive to be like Michelangelo, like that if you enjoy drawing cartoon rabbits, that's not good enough, and that you have to change what you feel like drawing to make it better suited to be in some sort of gallery. That there's only one route to get somewhere and you must go to that one destination. This video is for you. You just don't have to do it. <laughs> you don't have to get better at art and you don't have to conform to what other people want you to do with your life. So at this point you might be wondering why I am discouraging all the people of the world from striving to be better. 
My response is that, quite simply, I'm not. I'm not telling anyone out there to change their own personal agenda. I'm not telling you to stop practicing, and I'm not telling you to start practicing. I'm not telling anyone to do anything that they weren't already planning or not planning on doing. I'm not giving advice on how to become a better artist more quickly. I'm here telling you that it's okay if you don't want to be Van Gogh. I'm here telling you that there is more than one path with art and you don't have to strive to be anything more than you already are if that is what you want to be. So why am I not telling people that they should be better than what they already are? Why am I not giving them advice or giving them guidance? And I think that it's easiest for me to explain this to people if I just put it into a different situation. So let's say I go up to this old lady who is knitting a scarf and she's using a simple stitch and then I tell her that she needs to get better at knitting and she needs to do some really complex patterns and just start knitting things that she quite frankly doesn't want to knit. Would you do that to someone? I know, I know, like a hundred percent that I would never. For one, I don't care what she's knitting. It's not that I wouldn't enjoy it or think it was nice when she's done with it, but it's none of my business to tell her what to do, what to knit, what not to knit, or what to do with her time. So why is this okay in the art world? Why do people find it necessary to boss others around and tell them that they must be something or they need to be better than what they are now? Like maybe, maybe some kid just wants to sit there and draw rabbits and that should be totally perfectly fine. Let's, let's compare it to something else. And I don't like comparing art to another activity because it's so open and subjective and a ton of different activities falls into the one category of art. But in my previous video, someone compared art to this other activity and they compared art to running. So they said, if you don't run, you'll never improve at running. So if we take that idea and then we think of a baby who is crawling on the floor and then standing up and then walking around and then learns to run, like bam, you've already improved at running. So we're gonna take that same example and we're gonna carry that to today's video. If you enjoy running and running makes you happy, go ahead and run. But if some guy comes out of the woods and starts telling you that your running sucks and you have to run marathons, like seriously, you would just turn to that guy and like tell him to buzz off. But more realistically, if someone's coming out of the forest, you probably would want to call the police. But that's neither here nor there. The concept's still the same. If someone's telling you how to do something or how to run or how to do another activity that you're doing for fun, like, you don't need to listen to that. Art is so open to doing whatever. Like, little kids make art to express themselves, to communicate, to learn motor skills. Um, some people use art for purposes of therapy. Some people look at it like a hobby and just like to enjoy themselves and maybe draw or paint something to just relax. And all these things are great. So when did everyone on the planet have to all of a sudden become a professional to participate? I mean, that's like saying, sorry, you can't swim in the pool today because you're not Michael Phelps. Go Phelps or go home. It sounds really stupid, doesn't it? And I really hope that it should sound stupid to you because it sounds absolutely ridiculous to me. I look at it this way. Most people are hobbyists. 
And this is an example I just put in my head. This is how I view it. If a craft chain store like Hobby Lobby Michaels or AC Moore only sold products to professional artists, they would be out of business. Most people are hobbyists and not everyone wants to become a professional artist and that's totally fine. And it should be totally fine to anyone else. I think a lot of people get lost in this weird gray area where they think that art is some sort of thing that you have to enjoy in one way. Like you have to get better or everyone strives to be the best and it's one big huge competition. But seriously, look out your windows when you're driving. There are like there is just tons of art around. It's on posters, buildings, logos, signs. All that art was a job that some guy was paid to do, right? Not all the art you see around you is Da Vinci quality. And for a fact, most of the art you see around you isn't. But that's fine too, because you don't necessarily have to be a super amazing artist to be a professional artist. Some people make a living off of their art and aren't crazy famous like Picasso. And again, totally fine. And if someone tells you otherwise, like damn, isn't life too short to be looking down upon everyone else for not being good enough for your own personal standards? Like, it just sounds like such an unhappy way to live and, and an unhappy way to be. Instead of living up to everyone else's standards, maybe we should just live up to our own. Maybe we should make art that makes us happy and not what makes other people happy. And sure, if it's for a job or for school, you're taking some sort of class, I get it. But if it's for your own personal collection, who cares what anyone else thinks? And you being someone else in this situation, why would you care what someone else does with their time? Like, why do you feel the need to tell others what to do or how to be with their personal hobby? And yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for it. I know I'm gonna get some backlash, you know, something about I'm giving horrible advice and how I'm ruining the generations for artists, for future artists and all that. But you know what? I actually believe that people have the ability to forge their own futures. If someone wants to practice and they want to go to school and they want to do things a certain way, all the power to you. But maybe someone else thinks more similarly to me and they just want to have fun with it and maybe it accidentally turns into a profession for them. Good for them! Or maybe no one wants to have a profession. Maybe they just want to draw rabbits. Like, there are different routes to get where you're going, but also completely different destinations to travel to. And once you get to a destination at one point in your life, doesn't mean you can't get back on the road and go somewhere else later. Or hell, I mean, even if you want to stay at that destination because it makes you happy, you have every right to do that. I mean, you might not really care for improving right now, but maybe when you're older and you have more time, you'll get to it. Or maybe you super care about it when you're younger, and then you're like, oh hey, I'm in a good place now, and I'm successful and happy with what I do, and I want to stay at this pace for a bit. That's fine. Life isn't a cookie cutter stencil, so, so don't force it to be. If anyone takes anything away from today's video, it's that you should never feel any less of an artist, or more importantly, any less of a person for choosing to do things in your own way at your own pace. Be your own strangely shaped delicious cookie. 
there's a market for that. And hey, if you don't want to sell your cookie on the market, God, this is sounding kind of like inappropriate now. If you don't want to sell cookies at the bakery, <laughs> you don't have to do that. Like. That doesn't define you. That doesn't mean you're a good artist or a bad artist. You just do what you want to do. And that's totally cool. One thing I've always been confident in is that people don't need hand-holding. I believe that people can forge their own path. And if someone wants to take someone else's advice, they can do that. Or if they want to take a part of that advice from one person and then a part of advice from another person and kind of fuse them together, they can do that too. I really believe that people can pick and choose in order to formulate their own educated opinions and methods. You may think I'm believing in people too much. And if that's the case, maybe you're believing in them too little. Or, hear me out, maybe the reality is that the truth meets somewhere in the middle, and that's fine too. So what do you think? Do you think you have to improve at art? Is it a must? Is it hand in hand with being an artist? Do you think that you can be your own person and just do your own thing? And is that okay to do? Or do you think you have to strive to be better at all times? Must all art be da Vinci quality or should everyone just do their own thing? Okay, <laughs> this one I really hope people respond to. This is like the ultimate question. Would you tell grandma she must improve at knitting or would you leave her alone? <laughs> do you think all runners need to run marathons? Do you think people are smart enough to lead their own lives? And does everyone need to be told what to do in order to be successful? What do you think? And that's pretty much the end. Once again, this isn't advice on how to improve. This is life advice. And I believe in you and your ability to live happily and successfully. So go get him, tiger. I hope you guys have a really great weekend. Uh, hey, even if we disagree about things, I do genuinely hope that everyone is well. Uh, I also wanted to say that it's okay to not agree with me about things that I say. Like, I feel like last week some people kind of got weird about it and they acted like I'm this totally different person. Like, now that one of my videos didn't mesh with their own thoughts. But to me, that's okay. Because if I was friends only with people who thought exactly the same as I do, I'd be pretty lonely. So, really, I do hope you have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you guys soon in another video. Take care of yourselves.